I think we have discussed solenoid and toroid in the last class, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Let all of them come, then we will start. Arath, am I audible to you? Eba, am I audible to you? Okay, we should start. In the last class, we discussed solenoid and the toroid. Fine, let's start with the force on a moving charge in magnetic field. So, if we place some, if we place a charge in magnetic field having some velocity, then it experiences a force that is equals to Q bracket V cross V. 
fine this is the magnetic force experienced by an by by a charge in magnetic field where q is the charge with the velocity of the particle of the particle b is the magnetic field and theta is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field in this is in vector form so we talk about the magnitude so m represents the magnetic force f equals to q v v sin theta now there are two cases first is fm equals to zero when do we say the magnetic force experienced by an electric charge is zero either the magnetic field is zero or charge is zero or velocity is zero or the angle between them is theta that is theta zero or 180 zero means if a particle moves parallel to the electric magnetic field or anti parallel to the magnetic field in case of 180 degree fine so the magnetic force experienced by an electric force in the magnetic force experienced by an electric charge in magnetic force in magnetic field sorry that is fm equals to q v cross v v is the velocity b is the magnetic field in magnitude fm equals to q v v sin theta now there are two cases first is when do we say the force is zero either the magnetic field is zero charge is zero velocity is zero or theta is zero it means when a when a particle moves parallel to the magnetic field or anti parallel to the magnetic field then second second case is when do we see the force is maximum the theta is 90 degree when force is perpendicular sorry when velocity is perpendicular means velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field fine if the angle is 90 degree so force will be maximum now rules to find out the direction of a magnetic force on a charge so we will use Flemish left hand rule in which thumb will give you the direction of magnetic field. This is forefinger will give you the direction of magnetic field and middle finger that is central finger will give you the velocity. Sorry, thumb will give you the thumb will give you the direction of magnetic field. Forefinger you have to align along the magnetic and velocity. Let her come, then we'll start again. Mamuna, am I audible to you? Mamuna, am I audible to you? Mamuna, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's start. Last time we discussed solenoid and toroid. Today, we are going to discuss force on a moving charge in a uniform magnetic field. So fine, this is the force experienced by an electric charge when it moves in magnetic fields, where Q is the charge on the particle, V is the velocity of the particle, B is the magnetic field, theta is the angle between velocity and magnetic field. This is, it is in vector form. This is in vector form. And this is in scalar form. So Fm equals to QVV, QVB sine theta. Now there are two cases. When, when do we say the force is zero? Either the magnetic field is zero, charge is zero, velocity is zero, or charge moves parallel to the magnetic field, means theta equals to zero. And if the charge moves anti parallel to the magnetic field, that is theta equals to 180 degree. The second case is when do we say the force is maximum? When theta is 90 degree. If the velocity is perpendicular to the given magnetic field, then the force experienced by an electric charge will be maximum. That is F equals to maximum force equals to Q. V, B. This is the maximum force experienced by an electric charge in magnetic field. Further. Flemish left hand rule. Look, Flemish rule to find out the direction of magnetic force. Magnetic force. So, Flemish left hand rule. Now, the, the four finger you have to align along the direction of magnetic field, middle finger you have to align along the direction of velocity, then thumb will give you the direction of magnetic field. So fine, this is F, B, I. Fine, this is F, B, I. Thumb will give you the direction. You have to align your finger, four finger, along the direction of magnetic field, central finger along the velocity of the charged particle. Then the thumb will give you the direction of magnetic field. Just remember one thing. 
In this, the force is perpendicular to the velocity and force is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Fine. Whenever the cross product comes, just remember C vector equals to A vector cross B vector. So just remember one thing, whenever there is a cross product, so C vector is always perpendicular to the A vector and C vector is always perpendicular to the C vector. Fine. So C vector is perpendicular to the A vector and C vector is perpendicular to the B vector. So in this, likewise, the force, magnetic force, we use cross product, that force must be, magnetic force must be perpendicular to the magnet, must be perpendicular to the velocity and magnetic force must be perpendicular to the magnetic field. Fine, just remember the formula F equals to Q V V sin theta. Fine. I think everyone knows cross product. I hope so. Now try this question. Four to five minutes. Just do this question fast. Tefulla, are you okay with cross product? Bahamuna, Alan, Aksha, Eva. Pass. Try this question. Five minutes. In the product, the force is given. That is F equals to Q bracket V cross B. Now we have to find out the value of magnetic field. Fine. Q is given. Velocity is given in vector form. Force is also given in vector form. In component form means you have to use the cross product to find out the magnetic field. Last five minutes, everyone, and write your answer in chat box. Speed up. Everyone write your answer in chat box fast. Alan, Saipulla, Aksha, Mamuna, write your answer. B, B, B. Everyone, everyone has to write their answers in chat box fast. Everyone should write fast. Look, Sally. Forces. Force is given four I cap plus. Everyone have to write their answers in chat box fast. What is velocity? Two I cap, four J cap plus six K cap and charge is one. 
All right. Now this is one coulomb. Basically, one is given. Force equals to Q. It V cross V. This is the formula. Now Q is one. Now we have to find out the cross product. I J K. What is velocity? Two four six. What is magnetic field? B B B no. Now, so I equals to four B naught minus six B minus J two B naught minus six B plus K two B minus four B. What is force is given? Now. 20 j cap plus 12 k cap. Now, both the vectors are equal. So, i components must be equal to y components. k component must be equal to j component. And k component must be equal to k component. So, 4 must be equal to 4 v naught minus 6 v. First equation. Second is 20 equals to 2b naught minus 6b, this is second equation. And third equation is 12 equals to 2b minus 4b. Now we can find out the value of v by using the third equation, that is, which is second, this is third equation. So b is, b is minus 6. So B is minus 6, substitute in either of the equation. So 20 equals to 20 V naught minus 6 times minus 6. So 20 equals to 2 V naught minus 6, 6, 36. So B naught will come out. 36 minus 20 is minus 16, minus 16, minus 8. So B, B minus, so magnetic field equals to minus 6 I cap. Minus 6j cap, I think, 8k cap. Let me check the answer. 8. Sorry, b is the answer. b is the answer. Alan, did you get it? Yes, sir. Aksha, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Did you understand? Yes. Sir. Okay, now the motion of a charged particle in uniform magnetic field. B is the velocity, B is the magnetic field. Let it be particle is moving at an angle theta with the magnetic field and Q is the particle. Q is the charge. Now, whether theta is 0 degree or 180 degree, theta Zero means when the when the particle moves parallel to the magnetic field. This is velocity. When the particle moves parallel to the magnetic field, so sine theta is zero. Sine theta is zero. It means F M equals to Q V V sine zero. And what is sine zero? Sine zero is zero. Then force is zero. It means when a particle moves parallel to the magnetic field, the force experienced by a charged particle is zero. Second case when theta is 180 degree that is when particle moves anti pallet to the magnetic field in this also theta is 180 degree fine so if theta is 180 degree so sine 180 is again zero so force is zero fine just remember one thing when a particle moves either parallel or anti parallel fine then means when a particle moves parallel or anti parallel in magnetic field means when a particle moves in a straight line, fine, then the force experienced by the charged particle is always zero. Second case, second case is when theta is 90 degree. Theta is 90 degree means the force experienced by the particle is maximum that is Q, B, B, fine. When a particle moves, when a particle moves, Perpendicular means when a particle enters the magnetic field, 
in a when a particle enters the magnetic field perpendicular to the magnetic field sorry when a particle moves enters the magnetic field perpendicular to it then the path will be circular it means that it be the magnetic field is into the plane and a particle enters at an angle 90 degree with the magnetic field then the path will be circular fine if we use the if we have to find out the direction of magnetic field then we will use the fleming's left hand rule fine so this finger the four finger you have to align along the direction of magnetic field that is into the paper velocity velocity in this direction so force will be in this direction it means if the particle moves perpendicular to the magnetic field then the force will be towards the towards left fine after some time the particle reaches here and now if we try to find out the direction it would be like this the force will be in this direction and if the particle reaches here the force will be in this direction fine we can easily find out the direction of magnetic field by using Fleming's left hand rule. So the path comes out to be circular. Fine. So when the theta is 90 degree means when the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, then the path of the particle will be circular. Right. If a part particle moves in a circular path, so the radius of the path will be m v over q v. This mass of the particle, v is the velocity, q is the charge, v is the magnetic field. In this, this is second relation. K is kinetic energy, m is the mass, q v, q is the charge, v is the velocity. Now, q kinetic energy, kinetic energy equals to we can write charge times potential that is equals to work done. Fine. So two times q times this is potential difference this is potential difference m is the mass over q v that is magnetic field times charge this is the time period time period if a particle moves in a circular path so 2 pi m over q v angular speed is omega 2 pi over t that is q v over m frequency is 1 over time period these are the formula. Now, when a charged particle is projected perpendicular to the magnetic field, these the path is circular. First point, the speed and kinetic energy remains constant. The velocity and momentum changes only in one direction. Fine. And the third, the last is time period, frequency, and the angular velocity doesn't depend on the velocity and the radius of the path. Okay, try this question. Five minutes and write your answer in chat. Sir, can you show the formulas, please? Okay, first radius. Done.
Yes, sir. Now, this is the formula for time period. Angular speed and frequency. Done. Shall I move to question? Now try this question and write your answer in chat box. Everyone passed. Three minutes passed. Done. Please write your answer. Write your answer in chat box for D. And rest of you, Farhad, D. Sapulla, Aksha, write your answer. Heba. Fast, write your answer. Everyone, which formula we have to use it directly? R equals to MB over QV. That's it. And ionized hydrogen atoms and alpha particles with the, with the same momentum. Momentum means MB is momentum, that is QV, and uh, enters, magnetic, enters perpendicular to a constant magnetic field. B is also constant, so R is proportional to Q. That's it. Very easy question. So simple. So the ratio of hydrogen over alpha equals to charge on alpha particle over charge on hydrogen atom. What is the charge on alpha particle, Shafullah? Shafullah? 2Q. 2Q. Aksha, what is the charge on ionized hydrogen atom? Aksha? Aksha. Aksha, am I audible to you? E. E, e will cancel out 2 over 1, that is ratio is 2 is 2. So, D is on. Fine. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. No. No. If a particle, if we project a, if we project a particle at an angle theta other than 0, 90 or 180, then the path is helical. Fine. So if, if a particle moves at an angle theta with the velocity 
particle moves at a single theta with velocity v making with magnetic field then there would be two components of velocity v sin theta and v cos theta v cos theta is parallel to the magnetic field and v sin theta is perpendicular to the magnetic field Fine. So the radius, the path is helical. Like helix, this the path will be helical. This is helical path. The magnetic field along the x-axis, and we project. We project the particle at an angle theta with velocity v. So the path will be helical. So radius formula will be m v perpendicular over q v. V perpendicular is a v sine theta over q v. Time period formula is two pi m over magnetic field times charge and frequency is VQ over 2 pi M. Just remember one thing, the last radius formula was MB over QV. We have to repl replace the velocity by perpendicular component of the velocity that is M equals to V sine theta. Now, pitch, pitch is the linear distance, fine. Pitch is the linear distance. So, V parallel into time period, V parallel is V cos theta and time period we calculated 2 pi M over QV. So, time period remain as it is whether whether we project at an angle 90 degree or at an angle theta with the magnetic field. Now, this is the formula for the pitch. Write the formulas first. This is the formula. Tapula, Allen, write the formulas first. Then we will move to the question. Fast, everyone. Written. Alan, Tafula, written. Shall I move to question? Yes, sir. Now try this question. Very easy question. One minute. Fast. Write your answer in chat box, everyone pass. Okay. Speed will degree. Fast everyone. Farhad K, Alan K. Everyone, Aksha, Hanifa, Mamuna, write your answer. Please pass. Write your answer in chat box, everyone. A uniform electric field and a uniform magnetic field are acting along the same direction. See. Fast. A uniform electric field and a uniform magnetic field are acting in along the same direction. So this is magnetic field. This is electric field. Fine. Along the same direction in a projected in the region such that its velocity is pointed along the direction of the field. Then 
okay now velocity is in the direction and the an electron an electron this is an electron electron is projected in the same direction now then that electron the speed will decrease the speed will increase it turn towards left or direction of motion will towards right or direction of the motion okay look if a particle moves as i told you if a particle moves parallel to the electric field then it does not experience magnetic force fine so the magnetic force will be zero but the particle moves if a particle means if a charged particle moves in a electric field it experiences a electric force that is f equals to qe so there are two fields magnetic field and electric field and both are in the similar direction and the particle is projected in the same direction so what is what will happen the question is asking now it doesn't experience any magnetic force but there is an electric field also so it will experience a magnetic force okay what is mamuna what is the direction of the electric force on a negative particle is in the same direction or in the opposite direction sorry in the opposite direction opposite direction so it is a case of deacceleration okay so velocity will decrease first a is the answer is it clear to everyone aksha alan saifulla farha heba hanifa is yes, it sir. okay i repeat the magnetic field and electric field both are given in the question and the question is saying a particle an electron an electron is projected in the similar direction so the velocity is parallel to the magnetic field so there will be no magnetic force on it because the theta is 0 degree and sin 0 is degree so magnetic force will be experienced by an electron will be zero but there is an electric field is also so it will experience the force due to the electric field but in the opposite direction fine if if it were positive charge then it will experience the force in the same direction so a is the answer now lorentz force the total force experienced by a charge in magnetic or electric field that is f equals to q e vector plus v cross v this lorentz force case 1 when magnetic when velocity of the particle electric field and v are collinear means all are in the same direction so magnetic force will be zero but electric force will not be zero second when velocity electric field and magnetic field are mutually perpendicular fine so if if they are perpendicular then the net force experienced by the charged particle will be zero and just remember one thing this is the velocity by which the particle moves and this is the principle based on velocity selector fine for example let it be if there is a region in which the magnetic field and electric field are perpendicular to each other and we have to find out the velocity by which it gets straight away and doesn't means doesn't get deflected when it comes when it enters in magnetic field or electric field so what is the minimum velocity by which it should pass through the region so that it doesn't get deflected so velocity equals to electric field over magnetic field this formula you have to remember now try this question very easy question try one minute and this is the case in this case acceleration zero and if there is a region in which magnetic field is like this and magnetic electric field is like this so the if the question is asking what is the minimum velocity by which we by which the particle should be projected so that it should not get deflected so this is the formula to find out the velocity now try this and write your answer in chat box everyone fast very easy question one minute done a charged particle moves through a magnetic field in a direction perpendicular to it then 
which which particle sorry which which physical quantity perhaps t is the answer speed doesn't get changed try this question fast two minutes try two minutes fast And write your answer in chat box. Everyone fast. B B Allen. Okay, now the electron moves in a circular orbit with the uniform speed B. It produces a magnetic field B at the center of the circle. The radius of the circle is proportional to fine. Uh, so speed B. What we calc what do we have to calculate? The radius of the circle is proportional to radius. Now radius. So the magnetic field at the center will be in a circle in a what is the magnetic field due to a current carrying circular wire? Mu naught I. What is I? I over let it be R is the radius. Fine. Now current equals to Q over time. What is the time period? So time period is 2 pi R over velocity by now substitute here i equals to 2 pi r times velocity then substitute the value of i in magnetic field r square then r square equals to we can write e v velocity 2 pi v 2 pi mu and e all are constants. So we can write C is the answer. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, next topic is. Now, force on a current carrying conductor. If there is a conductor, this is conductor. Carrying current I, the force extended by the conductor is I L B sine theta. Fine. Where, fine. Where V is the magnetic field, I is the current, L is the length, theta is the L is the length, theta is the angle between the length of the conductor and the direction of the magnetic field. If theta is 90 degrees, Fine, if theta is 90 degree, then force is maximum. That is ILB. If theta is 0 degree, it means if I place, if I place the conductor either parallel or anti-parallel the magnetic field, then the force will be 0. Similarly, we have to use Fleming's left hand rule to find out the direction. Fine. So thumb will give you the direction of magnetic force. B four finger is magnetic field, and middle central finger is current. Try this question fast, everyone. Try two to three minutes. Everyone try this question. And write your answer in chat box.
everyone pass write your answer in chat box a straight wire of length 0 0.5 so easy question b and rest of you write your answer fast b Alan, Sapulla, Mamunar, Heva, Hanifa, write your answer, rest of you fast. The straight wire length is given, L is given, current is given, magnetic field is given. The field is perpendicular, it means the theta is 90 degree. The force on the wire, I L B, because 990 is 1, what is I? 1.2 into I is L is 0 0.5 and B is 2. Now the force between the two parallel current carrying wires. Fine. So these are the two wires carrying current in the same, same, same direction. I1 is the current in the first wire. I2 is the current in the second wire. The distance between the two wires are this R. Fine. So the force formula is mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 over R times L, where L is the length of the wire. And force per unit length is you have to divide the given force by L. So that is mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 over R. This formula write down fast in a notebook. Everyone. Alan, how much did you get in the last test? In physics? So I didn't get my marks yet. What about the rest of you? Mahamuna, did you appear for the test? Parhat, how much did you score in the last test? Parhat, how much did you want? Parhat? Yes, sir. How much did you get in the last test? Sir, in uh, the test that we gave this Friday or the one before? The last Friday. Wait, sir. Tepulla. Formula written. Shall I move? Now just remember if the like current means if the current, if the current in the both the wires are in the same direction, then they will attract. If the unlike current means the currents are in opposite direction, then they will repel. Try this question fast. Okay, Bharat. Try this question, everyone fast. The two two long parallel wires are at the distance of one meter. Both of them carry one ampere of current. The force of attraction per unit length between them is fast. Write your answer in chat box fast. Rest of you write your answer in chat box. Fast, write your answer fast. Now, two long parallel wires at a distance one meter. R is given very easy. Current is both of them I1 equals to I2 equals to 1 ampere. The force of attraction per unit length. So the formula is mu naught 2 pi A.
and so mu naught i1 i2 over r what is mu naught 4 pi 10 to the minus 7 over 2 pi what is i 1 into 1 for r is 1 2 into 10 to the minus newton per meter okay guys is it clear to everyone the questions are straight forward shall i move further this yes, one? sir. Okay. So, like currents attract and like currents repel. Magnetic moment. It is a product of current times area. This is A is the area, I is the current, and the number of turns. It is a vector quantity. Fine. Directed along the area vector. It means the area vector is perpendicular to the given surface. Fine. The magnetic moment will have the same direction. As I unit is ampere meter square. Now torque on a current carrying load. Torque equals to N I B A sine theta. If we place a current carrying coil in magnetic field. Point in magnetic field, so it experiences a torque. That torque equals to NIBA sine theta. Theta is the angle point between the area vector and the magnetic field, and I is the current and the number of turns. In vector form, torque equals to M cross B. M is magnetic moment. Okay. So if theta is 0 degree, the torque is 0 degree because sine theta is 0 is 0. It means when plane of the coil is perpendicular to the field. When area vector makes an angle 0 degree, it means if the direction of the area vector and the magnetic field both have same direction, then theta is 0 degree. Then the magnetic, then the torque is zero. Just remember, this is the angle between angle between area vector and magnetic field. And here, the plane of the coil is perpendicular. The plane of the coil, plane of the coil, fine, perpendicular to the magnetic field like this. Fine. So area vector will be in the same direction of magnetic field. So angle will be zero degree. So torque will be zero. When theta is ninety degree, when the plane of the coil is per is parallel like like this fine if plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field so area vector will be perpendicular hence the torque will be maximum just remember theta is the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field don't get confused so the maximum torque is niva and this ex this expression is applicable for all shapes whether it is circular coil or rectangular coil. Try this question first. A current loop in a magnetic field. Which of the option? One to two minutes. Write your answer fast in your chat box. Everyone fast. Write your answer in chat box. Everyone fast. Speed up. Ellen. Write your answer. A current loop in a magnetic field experiences a torque, whether field is uniform or non-uniform. Can be equilibrium in one orientation, can be equilibrium in two orientation. Both of equilibrium states are unstable. Can be equilibrium in two orientation, one is stable, another is unstable. Write your answer fast. Which of the option is correct? 
अक्षा एल एन सैफुल्ला करेंट लूप इन मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एक्सपीरियंस अ टॉर्क वेदर द फील्ड इज यूनिफॉर्म और नॉन यूनिफॉर्म फाइन फाइन बट इट कंप्लीटली डिपेंड्स ऑन द एंगल बिटवीन द एरिया वेक्टर एंड द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड सैफुल्ला डी ओके द फर्स्ट इज रॉन्ग डी करेक्ट लुक इफ वी प्लेस अ मैग्नेटिक इफ वी प्लेस अ करेंट कैरिंग लूप इन अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इट इट मे और मे नॉट एक्सपीरियंस अ फोर्स Fine. Provided the field is uniform or non-uniform. Fine. If the angle is zero degree between the area vector and the magnetic field, so torque is zero in both the cases, whether the field is uniform or non-uniform. Second case, can we equilibrium in one or one orientation? No. Theta or one eighty, both are equilibrium cases. Now both are unstable. If theta is zero degree, then it's stable. If theta is one eighty degree, then unstable. So D is the correct option. Fine. So A current carrying loop may or may not experiences a torque. It completely depends on the orientation. Fine. There are two types of equilibrium: stable and unstable. So D is the correct option. Now try this question, everyone. Pass and write your answer in chat box. Four minutes. Try. write your answer alan sapulla d and rest of you write your answer fast b what is given b for her mamuna aksha write your answer write your answer everyone fast making too late please now what is given rectangular coil length is given width is given number of turns Yes. 
number of term given wire is suspended vertically in uniform magnetic field the coil carries current is given if the plane of the coil is inclined at an angle 30 degree now this is the angle between the plane and the magnetic field fine this is let it be this plane it is magnetic field okay making an angle 30 degree so area vector will be perpendicular to the plane that is so the angle between magnetic field and area vector is 60 degree so torque equals to and i b a sine theta what is n 50 what is i 2 what is b 0 0.2 what is a length times breadth and what is sine theta sine 60 is 2 3 over 2 right if we calculate it how much will you get So 100 into 0 0.1 into 0 0.12 into 0 0.1. So 12 into 10 is to our minus 2. That is 0 0.12. D is the option. B per half. Farad, how did you get B? Alan, how did you get B? Alan, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. I think I did some miscalculation. Farhad, you got the same answer. Sir, maybe my calculation is wrong. I'm checking. Okay, fine. Is it clear to everyone? The angle between plane and the magnetic field was given. But in formula, you have to use the angle between area vector and magnetic field. So just remember the plane makes an angle 30 degree. So the area factor will be like this, which will, which will make 60 degree with the magnetic field. Now, moving coil galvanometer. Fine. Galvanometer basically the principle of the gal. It is a device to detect the current. Fine. It's principle based. Principle based. When a current carrying coil plays in magnetic field, it experiences a torque. Fine. In moving galvanometer, uniform magnetic field is used. Fine, so that it can experience maximum torque, maximum deflecting torque. Fine, soft iron core is the material to increase the sensitivity. Because soft iron core is ferromagnetic in nature. Now deflect, deflecting torque. Fine, if I place this in magnetic field, so it will experience the torque, so it will show deflection. So that is equal to NIBA. Theta is 90 degree as I told you because the field is radial. Fine. So restoring torque. Restoring torque. Because we have to stop the needle. So torque equals to K times alpha where K is the torsional, torsional constant of the fiber. Now at equilibrium what happens? Both becomes equal torque, restoring torque equals to deflecting torque, if they, that is equal to K alpha equals to NIBA. So from here, we can easily calculate I equals to K alpha over NBA, I equals to GA, where G is K over, this is a constant, K over NBA. Now, this is constant. It shows that alpha is directly proportional to current. This is a linear relationship. Fine, this is a linear relationship. So what is galvanometer? Galvanometer basically it is a device to detect the current. In its principle is when a current, 
when a current carrying coil plays in magnetic field, it experiences a torque. Fine. So there are two types of torque. First is deflecting. If you place a current carrying coil in magnetic field, it should deflection. That is NIBA. Theta is 90 degree because the field is uniform. The storing torque is K times alpha. K is the original constant of the fiber. At equilibrium, when the needle stops, finds at equilibrium, torque alpha equals to deflecting torque. If you equate them, you will get alpha directly proportional to I. This is called regeneration force. Fine. Makes the moving call galvanometer useful for measurement of further detection, detection of current. Now, current sensitivity. Current sensitivity means deflection per unit current. So, theta is the deflection. Fine. I is the current. So, theta is, if this is the formula, NIVA over K. Just remember this formula, write in your notebook. First, current sensitivity is I theta over I, that is deflection per unit current. Theta equals to this is the current sensitivity NABA over I. Pass right. Likewise, the SI unit is radian and per ampere or, or division per ampere. Now, voltage sensitivity is deflection per unit voltage theta over V, NIVA over K. So, I over V. I substituted the value of theta like alpha. Alpha was a deflection. Okay. Now, VS. V equals to I or I will cancel out. So, voltage sensitivity then N A B over K times R. This is voltage sensitivity. This is, this is equals to current sensitivity. Since this can I think okay. fine. So voltage sensitivity equals to IS over R. This this formula is very important. Fine. These are the formulas. Write the formula for voltage sensitivity, then current sensitivity. And once you write, please let me know. We will go through. Done. Done. Alan, Aksha, Parhat, Tapulla, done. Alan, is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Now, this formula. Current sensitivity of moving of galvanometer is 5 division per ampere. Fine. And voltage sensitivity is given 20 division per volt. Resistance of the galvanometer. Fast. Two minutes. This question is very simple. IS is given and voltage sensitivity is given. 5 division per milliampere and 20 division per volt. First, write your answer in chat box, everyone. Aksha, Parhat, Eva, Alan. Write your answer, Farhat. Write your answer. Shiva, write your answer. Tabula, write your answer. Everyone, pass. A. Farhat, A. Tabula, what about you? Aksha. 
अक्षर राइट योर आंसर Vs equals to Is over R. Find resistance. We have to calculate what is five division per ampere milli ampere. So first of all, we have to switch into amperes. That is ten is to three thousand and twenty. Two fifty. Now easy. Very easy question. Now conversion, conversion of galvanometer into ammeter. Fine. This is shunt. This is called shunt. Fine. If we have to change galvanometer into ammeter, then we use a resistance which should be connected in parallel. Fine. Ammeter is a device to measure. What is ammeter? Used to measure. To measure. Current. Okay, so so galvanometer. If we have to change galvanometer into ammeter, then we have to use a resistance which should be connected in parallel with the galvanometer. So the resultant device will be will be come out ammeter. So let it be I is the total current. This is galvanometer. Fine. So the current divides at this junction. Ig is the current in the galvanometer. I minus Ig is the current passing through the shunt. Shunt is a resistance which is connected to in parallel. I minus Ig. Fine. So G is the resistance of the galvanometer. Ig is the current with which the galvanometer gives the full scale deflection. Zero to I is the required range of ammeter. S is a shunt. Shunt basically it is a resistance. Now this is the formula to calculate the shunt. Just remember, and this formula you have to remember. And remember one thing: this is A B. Fine. So potential difference will be same across the shunt or or the galvanometer. The potential difference will be same. So I G capital G equals to I minus I G times S. If you equate them, you'll get You can easily find out the value of S. That is shunt I G G or I minus I G. Pass. So what is R A? What is R A? The equivalent resistance. Look, both the resistances are in parallel. Fine. Just one. Now, let it be R A is the equivalent resistance of the combination. So one by S plus one by G. So G plus S over S G. So R A equals to S G over G S. This is the equivalent resistance. In this conversion, and just remember, shunt is greater than this because because the resistance is minimum in parallel. But why? Resistance is minimum in parallel and maximum in series. Why, Saifullah? Why the parallel is? Why why the resistance is minimum in parallel and maximum in series? Because in parallel area increases, whereas in series length increases. So length is in directly proportional to the re resistance, directly proportional to the length. If we increase the length, then resistance increases, and if we increase the area, what happens in case of parallel? The area increases and the resistance decreases. So if we increase the area, the resistance decreases. Inversely proportional resistance is inversely proportional to the area. Resistance of ideal ammeter is zero, and the range of ammeter can be increased but cannot be decreased. Now conversion of a galvanometer into voltmeter. Okay. First of all, write the formulas. First, let's write them. Everyone,
everyone pass please dan allen have you written the formulas yes sir so a uh, resistance is connected in parallel while converting galvanometer into ammeter conversion galvanometer into voltmeter so voltmeter what is voltmeter device to measure potential difference fine so if we convert if we have to convert galvanometer into voltmeter then we have to connect a resistance in series fine do you know why do we connect resistance in series because so the negligible amount of current flow through the galvanometer right so there is there will be less potential drop because if we connect the resistance in series the resistance increases as i told you resistance is directly proportional to the length so if we have to connect the resistance in series to convert the galvanometer into voltmeter is it clear so the minimum amount of current passed through the galvanometer so we will get almost the exact value of potential difference so ig is the current passing through the galvanometer r is the resistance now g is the resistance ig is the current 0 to v is the required range r is the high series resistance this is the formula fine and if we if we calculate the total resistance then g plus r fine so in 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 case of in case of voltmeter if we convert galvanometer into voltmeter then we have to if we have to find out the equivalent resistance then the resistance will increase so the resistance increases ideal voltmeter is ideal voltmeter have infinite resistance like potentiometer because potentiometer doesn't draw any current from the circuit that's why we call it infinite resistance ideal voltmeter range of voltmeter can be increased or decreased now try this question 5 minutes try this question fast done try to run in chat box everyone
Best of you, write your answer. Tefulla, Parhat, Aksha. Aksha, write your answer. Write your answer. Please write your answer in chat box, everyone. The question is very simple. Now, what is given? The resistance of the ammeter is 13. And its scale is graduated current. So, IG is given. Deflection current. After additional, I is given 750. R is given. That is galvanometer's current is given. Sorry, resistance is given 30. What was the formula? I equals to what was the formula? Please, Alan, let me know. S equals to we have to calculate the shunt. Aksha. Parhat, let me know the formula. S equals to let me know the formula. Parhat, Alan. Write the formula. Alan, let me know the formula. Alan, what's the formula to calculate the shunt? In ammeter? Uh, IgG by I minus IG. IgG is I minus I. Okay. What is IG? 100 G is 13. 750 minus 100. Now, 1300 over 650. 2, 4. So, 2, 4. Visa. Is it clear to everyone? Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Alan, now what is the formula to calculate the force experienced by a charged particle when we place in magnetic field having velocity V? Let me know the formula. Fast every Alan. Sir, K B B sin theta. Okay. Parat, if theta is zero degree, then what is the force experienced by the charged particle in uniform magnetic field? If theta is zero degree, Parhat, please answer zero. Zero. Third. Shafulla, what is the force experienced by the? What is the force between the two current carrying conductors? Having current I one, I two, and the distance between them is R. What is the formula, Shafulla? Um, mu zero by. 2 pi into I1, I2 by R. Force per unit length. What is the torque experienced by the current carrying coil in a uniform magnetic field? Aksha. What is the torque experienced by the magnetic field? What is the torque experienced by the current carrying coil in uniform magnetic field? Fast. Aksha. Eva, what is the torque experienced by the current carrying coil? Alan? Yes, sir. What is the torque? The torque experienced by? By a current carrying coil in uniform magnetic field. 
तो अर्थी को से वोड़े सा फॉर्मला एन आई बी ए साइन थीटा ओके यस सर Which which rule to find? Which rule is used to find out the direction of magnetic field? And which which rule is to find out the direction of magnetic force in? To find out the direction of magnetic force on a current carrying coil, sorry, on on a current carrying conductor. Alan. Sir, right hand thumb rule. Right hand thumb rule or Fleming? Yes, sir. Fleming's rule. Fleming's left hand rule. Next, what is the force experienced by the current carrying conductor in magnetic field? Farhad, what is the formula? Having current I length L. What is the formula, Farhad? I will be sine theta. Okay, I will be sine theta. Now, what is galvanometer? Sapulla, what is galvanometer? I mean, it is a device to detect small amount of current. Mm -hmm. Why do we use soft iron core, Alan? So it's easily magnetized. Sorry. It's easily magnetized. To increase the sensitivity. Which kind of magnetic field do we use in galvanometer? Farhad, which kind of magnetic field? Alan, which kind of magnetic field? So radial. Hmm. Why do we use it, Alan? Because it's directed outwards from the center. No, for the maximum torque. Because the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field will always be ninety degree. Yes, sir. Why do we use? How do we connect resistance to convert galvanometer into voltmeter, series or parallel? Alan or Saifulla, Farhat, Aksha, Eva, anyone? How do we connect resistance? So for meter or voltmeter? For voltmeter. So in series. But why? Why say for love? Why do we connect in series? Um, because uh, because less amount of resistance is high and 